everyone and welcome to today's video which is Hermione makes a bunch of questionable decisions, gets everything she owns covered in glitter and gets stickier by the minute. Um, today we're making resin crafts so yay! Why are we making resin crafts you might ask? Well the other night a couple of weeks ago I was scrolling on TikTok and then I just stumbled upon resin TikTok, which is just a bunch of very satisfying videos about people pouring and demolding silicone moulds of resin. It's fascinating. And before I knew it, I had already express ordered a bunch of resin making supplies. My first instinct was, you know, let's encase some of my photo cards in resin, wouldn't that be fun? But then I was like, well, perhaps I could make a video on it and then it's a taxable expense. If you're from my accountant's office or HMRC, that was a very bad joke. The second reason that I'd like to try resin crafts is actually because it's been a really, really long time since I have tried a new craft that I have no experience in and I thought this would be the perfect opportunity and that is why today's video is very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. I will tell you a little bit more about that later in the video when the time comes. I just wanted to let you know that it is a sponsored video and thank you very much to Skillshare. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Step one if you're going to delve into the fascinating world of making resin crafts is that you're going to need to buy a kit with the resin and a few bits and pieces that you're going to want for the process. You will need some two-part epoxy resin which you can find online or at your local craft store. It should come with a few measuring cups and some lolly sticks to stir it with. I also picked up these pigments to try out. You'll need some silicone moulds, make sure that they're silicone so you can peel the resin out. I got a few different ones and some of these tiny tweezers are really helpful too. Step two is to pick items that you want to encase in your resin. You might just use glitter or pigment, or you might want to find things around your house like old photos or memorabilia that you want to keep forever. I decided to dry some flowers, so here's a few wholesome clips of me uh, borrowing some flowers from my nan's garden. <laughs> once you've collected all your bits is to start mixing the resin. Now this is going to depend pretty much on the instructions on your packet, but mine you had to mix for a while. Always remember to wear gloves. Some of us are better at remembering not to take them off halfway through than others but <laughs> please try and wear gloves and make sure you're doing this in a well ventilated space. Step four is now the fun part to actually pour your resin, get creative, put stuff in it and make whatever you wanna make with it. So I will be honest, I have been doing this over the last few weeks and progressively I've been getting better and better. There have been mistakes. I have definitely sometimes just gone for it and chucked a load of stuff in, but I've learned a lot along the way. And I did learn a few tips from Skillshare, which I'll tell you about in a minute because they were very, very helpful. So yeah, here are my resin projects. The first thing I tried was my dried flowers, which in all honesty, I don't think I left for long enough to dry, but I'll show you what I did anyway. I started by doing a thin coat of the mixed resin on the bottom of a coaster and trying to pop out as many bubbles as possible. And then I added in all of my dried flowers. Now I left these to dry for a couple of days and then I put most of them in the microwave bar a couple of them to see what would happen and um, what happened was those pink ones went brown because they didn't go in the microwave but the rest of them stayed fairly reasonably colorful so um, 
I don't know, definitely leave them to dry long enough. I was just getting really excited and really wanted to make this video. I also added a few gold flecks to this smaller one to see how they turn out and um, I'll show you how they turned out towards the end. The second project I wanted to try was repurposing this little ceramic bowl. So I found these stickers in this bandeau book of stickers that I really wanted to use for something special. I am one of those people who keeps stickers and hoards them and then never uses them so this was the perfect opportunity to keep them forever. So. Once I was pretty happy with the placement, I added the resin using my stick to make sure it was nice and flat and in all of the corners of the ceramic plate. And I added a little dusting of some glitter as well because what is a resin craft without glitter? My next attempt was at a phone case. I picked up these on Etsy. They're like clear stickers and they're really, really cute. I love them and wanted to encase one on the back of this phone case that I picked up from Poundland for one pound. Good old Poundland. So I just placed it nice and centered on the back and mixed up some really fun pink and gold and orange glitter that I also picked up on Etsy. I found a lot of good stuff on Etsy for these projects. So I just then poured a very small amount bit by bit on the back and I used the stick to guide it all over the back of the case and to flatten it out. Make sure you don't add too much because it will drip down the sides if you do so be very very cautious and just add a tiny bit at a time. And lastly, here's a couple of tips with the smaller charms that I've made. Here I was testing a few things and with the colourful powder, I think it's best to add a layer to the base of your mould before adding in the resin because then you get a really nice opaque finish and it doesn't look too cloudy. I did test it by adding some glitter and things in first but I just found that it worked better with clear resin if you're using glitter. So this is how it came out with the powder at the bottom and here's a couple of things with like beads and other items with the clear resin it just looks so much better and here's the fun part demolding oh i love this part it's so so satisfying i could do this all day i wish this was my job i i really do but just demolding resin molds is just so fun look at that so here's just a couple of the the molds coming out basically <laughs> And before I show you how all these things turned out, here are some of the finishing touches. I used this test piece to actually create a magnet with a little clip on the front to go on my fridge to put like shopping lists or Polaroid pictures. I do need a couple more magnets. I ran out and it's quite heavy so it needs two at the bottom. But I just hot glued a clip and the magnets to that and voila, all done. And then with some of the smaller charms, I just added some jump rings and attached them to necklaces, earrings, key rings, the lot. This is quite delicate and tricky to do, but it's a nice kind of craft to pass some time while you're watching Netflix or whatever. So you're gonna to wanna to let your resin cure as per the instructions. And here are some of the things that I managed to make. I think the thing I got carried away with the most is making coasters. They were so satisfying to make. This is my favorite one, the pink one with the glitter. But I made these in all kinds of colors and glitters and types. And as you can see, this was my flower one. I definitely didn't leave them long enough to dry out. I'm a bit disappointed, but I had to get on with the video. So I won't make that mistake next time. Moving on to the jewelry pieces. These were so fun to make. And I just went wild with the glitter because these things kind of reminded me of my childhood a bit and oh, I just I thought they were so fun and especially the key rings this is my favorite one I made a little resin H and then encased it in more resin and that one's going on my keys and then my favorites were these with the tiny dried flowers in like this necklace I also made a key ring I bought the tiny dried flowers from Etsy and they didn't die so there's a tip for you perhaps get them on Etsy but I really love those they're a lot more grown up looking you know and here's the little trinket dish as well I love this one too I love that this was a way for me to keep my stickers without having to stick them on something you know and then lose them 
And then the phone case, I've got this on my phone right now. I'm really pleased with it. I'm surprised at how many of these crafts I'm actually very, very happy with. And they're scattered all around my house now. <laughs> so I hope my family and friends know that they're gonna be getting resin crafts for Christmas for the next few years. Um, these were the pots. I loved these. They were so satisfying to make and demold. And I love the glitter in them as well. And uh, here was my fridge magnets, which still needs two magnets on the back. I had a lot of fun during this process, but as you can see, some of my first attempts were not as good as the last attempts, and I learned a lot along the way, but halfway through my process, I got a bit stuck, and I decided it was about time to see what someone who's a little bit more professional at resin making would be able to help me with, which is when I logged into Skillshare and I checked out a few of their resin tutorials. I learned a lot from those. They were really nice and simple, and very well planned out and I learned a few skills that I didn't know that I needed. For example, with the resin it often gets lots of little bubbles in it which you can poke out with a toothpick but a lot of the professionals use a heat tool so I was thinking oh I don't have one of those smarty pants will just go and use a hairdryer and then I just made a colossal wave of resin that went everywhere. No! But I actually learned from Skillshare that you can use a lighter and that will help pop out all the bubbles as well. The more you know. I also thought I'd mention that I'm using Skillshare to try and learn how to digitally illustrate using Procreate. And this is the tutorial I'm using right now. This is the intro to Procreate. It's really good. I'm very much enjoying it. If you want to check out Skillshare, you want to learn something new or just try out maybe a new craft like punch needling or crochet. There are so many different tutorials on there. Anything you can dream up, you can probably find it on Skillshare. So I'm going to leave that link down below if you want to check it out. If you use my code, you can get a free trial. So check it out and see what you can learn. So yeah, that is the process of making resin pieces. However, I have a bonus craft that I didn't include in the main area of the video because I thought, I don't know, I give it a five out of 10 because it worked, but I feel like I need to perfect the method. But uh, if you don't have a silicone mold, and you wanna try and make one, I did try and make one based on this tip that I've seen floating around the internet for a really long time. I just wanted to try it out. It's the tip where you get some bathroom silicone, you know, the kind of stuff that you squeeze along the edge of your bath that's also really sticky. Why does everything have to be so sticky? Ugh. Anyway, you get the bathroom silicone and you pour it into a bowl of soapy water and then supposedly you're supposed to be able to make a silicone mold out of it. And I did try this. A few things that I've learned is that you need a lot of soap in the water and it's probably good to let the silicone sit in the water for a few minutes before you put your hands in there. Make sure you coat your hands with soap when you are molding the silicone. Keep it in the water because that will help lessen everything getting covered in a layer of goo and then when you're ready you can take it out and kind of roll it into a ball leave it on a piece of grease proof paper for a while like a good few minutes to just get rid of a bit of that excess water and then kind of round it into the shape you want and press your item into it the items you want to put in here are going to be like metal or plastic. You probably don't want to put anything wooden in there or anything that's absorbent. Something that you'll be able to safely cut out of your silicone blob. Leave it in there for a good few hours and then you can take it out. You might need to use a craft knife to cut down the top just to be able to peel these things out. And you know what, to my surprise, it did work. I will give it that. It worked and it did create a mold. I think the problem that I had at this point is I was way too excited and I wanted to try it out and I put some resin in there straight away. I made some gold bumblebees and lemons and it worked, it did work. But 24 hours later when I demolded the resin, it was really sticky. And I think if I'd left my silicone mold dry for like two or three days, I might not have had that problem. My little pieces did dry out in the end. It just took about a week. 
of them being really sticky and yeah. I might try it again. Let me know if you want to see an update, but um, I would definitely recommend A, leaving it out to dry a lot longer and B, perhaps just buy the putty that you can make silicone molds out of because that would probably be a lot less stressful, but um, I thought I would try it anyway. Yay for a fun bonus craft. Anyway, that is everything for today's adventures with resin with Hermione. And if you wanna see any more videos like this in the future where I tackle a craft that I'm not very good at and I try to get better at it, please let me know in the comments down below. As of next week, we'll be back to our regular scheduled programming with crafts that I'm a bit more comfortable with or probably some home related content. But uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Happy resin craft making and um, I'll see you next time. Bye!